Hello everyone, uh, my name is Setsuko and I, uh, my research concerns socio-political history of technology and speculative design. That means I study the history of technology and apply that for the uh, contemporary design process. Today I'm joined by my colleague Sai. Uh, I'm a PhD student at SUTD and as I mentioned before, I'm testing AI systems for fairness issues basically. In this case, audio systems. Here's the outline of our presentation. Yes, we should stay close to this. Um, our collaborative research uh, investigates the fairness in multilingual uh, research, sorry, multilingual speech recognition technology. Uh, in particular, uh, we are looking to test what uh, policy philosopher Ann Phillips called equality of outcome. What that means is that we want automated uh, speech recognition, ASR for short, to be fair for everybody, uh, to treat everybody equally, regardless of their race, gender, class, disability status, or national origins. And our work is part of the larger global efforts to mitigate the you know, bias in, in algorithms. So there are efforts to uh, tackle bias against uh, black Americans in the US, or bias against uh, asylum seekers in the US regarding uh, ASR usage. Now what makes our research unique is that we, we work with Singlish, which is a vernacular in Singapore. And it is an English-based creole and reflects the cadence and the vocabularies of, of our region. Uh, so there's a lot of words uh, from Malay, Tamil, Mandarin, and many other uh, Chinese dialects in the region. Uh, so let's take a look at what a ASR uh, developed for Singlish speakers would look like. Hello, good afternoon, SCDF emergency. How can I help you? Hello, can you please come to Jalan Sultan? There's a fire. Niman ka ikwaiten ma. Please hurry up and come. Now, as you can see, this automatic speech recognition system can transcribe 995 emergency calls, not just in Singlish, but in other national languages as well. Now, it's in a proof of concept stage, but it is one of the ways the SCDF is using technology to help process its emergency. So I will go into detail, but when we're testing fairness in ASR, we're basically using three things. So we need the speech corpus and the ASR itself and the methodology uh, called ACUVOX, which Sai developed to, 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 to test the fairness. So I'll let Sai explain what these uh, three things look like. So for the data set itself, um, so for the data set itself, we are using Singapore's natural, national speech corpus. We are very fortunate in that they've uh, collected an enormous amount of data from long-time residents in the country. Uh, they've received formal education there, so we know for certain that they've had some aspect of the Singlish accent for all of these locals. And in addition, they also labeled metadata, like gender, race, and this is quite essential for testing fairness issues, because without knowledge of who is who, we can't really test for anything. Um, so. This is the high level motivation. Um, when we think about fairness, let's suppose we're looking at like gendered fairness for males versus females. We can think of it as, okay, uh, if my fairness error rate for one, error rate for ASI is higher for one group as opposed to another, we can consider it unfair. But let's think a bit further. What happens if the error rates are similar? Is that still fair? Uh, we postulate that that's not necessarily the case. We say that Suppose we are adding some perturbation, some change. Uh, in this case, you can see that there's some drops in the audio. Um, are these uh, changes able to, um, are the ASRs able to handle these changes equally well for all groups? So for high level methodology, we take speech, we send it to an AI Singapore, the speech lab system, which is an ASR, and we get the ASR error rate and we repeat the process after adding some noise, as you mentioned. Uh, so then we find the error rates again. We repeat this for the other group. So in this case, a female speaker, we are trying to do the same thing, finding the ASI error rate, then we add noise, um, then we apply it to a speech recognition system once more, 
and we get another error rate. So now we have four sets of error rates, and now we can compare across these groups. So what we see is, in some cases, we can see that error rates for unmodified speech is approximately equal. They might all have approximately the same performance. But when we make these, these minor modifications, these perturbations, we find that the degradation in um, speech transcription is much greater for one group than the other. And that in itself is also a level of fairness that people might not consider previously. So we have some preliminary findings for the speech lab system we are testing. So you can see here that uh, the error rates when it's unmodified are fairly similar for all three groups, Chinese, Malay, and Indians. But once you do some perturbations, you can see that the error rates are elevated, which is understandable. But um, what's not understandable and acceptable is that the error rates increase for Chinese speakers is slightly less than that for other speakers. So it is one thing to measure you know, equ uh, equality of outcome, but it is quite another to figure out where the discrepancies are coming from and how to mitigate them. So in trying to identify where the unfairness is coming from, from humanities perspectives, uh, uh, sorry, we are following the uh, Global DH scholars uh, who cautions us uh, about privileging the global North epistemologies. Um, so in Singapore, there's this concept called Chinese privilege, invoking the North American equivalent of uh, white privilege. Uh, Singapore is 70% Chinese, and the majoritarian policy often uh, plays in their favor. So in this sense, it is almost tempting to cite Chinese privilege to explain the poor performance of ASR in uh, adversarial conditions. For instance, uh, the speech corpus itself followed the exact uh, racial, uh, racial ratio uh, of the reality uh, when collecting speech data. And ASR followed the previous research on uh, Mandarin English code switching speakers. Now, if the size of data is all what matters, we could say um, what uh, ASR could have done is to have taken the equity approach and to collect um, uh, equalizing weight to collect data, right? So uh, more data for uh, Malay speakers and for in, uh, Tamil speakers, for instance. But what we are interested in is the fact that Singlish uh, is a bit more fluid as an entity, and that it doesn't always follow this neat, you know, race classification that the government likes to resort to. And when we pay attention to, to this, you know, fluidity in the reality that we live in, uh, this shines on the on the uh, kind of obfuscated fact uh, in the in the in the data set, and how the ASR is designed. So when the researchers were uh, conducting the uh, Mandarin uh, English uh, uh, code switching speakers, they collected the samples both in Singapore and in Malaysia. Uh, what they didn't talk about much is that people in Malaysia are fluent in Malay. And so there was this, you know, kind of, uh, uh, kind of obfuscation of the fact that, that there's a Malay fluency that was already in the, in the design process, right? And I think uh, in part this explains how the ASR and size testing uh, uh, performed fairly well for Malay speakers compared to English, uh, for uh, in Indian speakers. Uh, so this is how we are kind of uh, looking at the fluidity, uh, something that evades out of the clear cut classification systems. As Rupika Risam suggests, uh, to practice digital humanities with the post-colonial uh, sensitivity, uh, we must attend to, one, accent of global DH initiatives, and two, to be cognizant of what may stand outside of global North epistemologies. Uh, we hope our presentation has showcased how we are using Singlish, an accented English, as a, as a locale for our critical interventions. Thank you.